important water is in our life. Without water, humans, the flora and the fauna, as well, even the microorganisms, none can survive on the earth. Water is vital for the day-to-day -day functioning of this entire globe. Without water, you cannot think of even the speck of life. Today we will study about storing water. How can we store water in huge quanta and utilize it for irrigation and various other purposes? In India, after knowing the importance and the role the huge reservoirs can play from the viewpoint of agriculture, flood control, irrigation, we have built a number of multi-purpose dam projects. We have a model of one such project here. These are useful in storing water and providing the same for various life activities. We know India is based on monsoon rains. If monsoon rains fall, fail, then there won't be agriculture. There won't be any farming activity and farmers will be in disarray. So Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, when he inaugurated the first multi-purpose dam project, at Bakra Nangal, he said, he called the multi-purpose dams as the future temples of India. He called them as modern tem temples of modern India. Let's see how a dam is built, how to attend to the various requirements of human beings. He is a project which you have made out of plaster of Paris, very well made, well coloured, and you will have a lot of things to learn from this. Here you have hills all around. Here you have a gorge, a deep gorge, through which water is rushing. It would have flown by the river all down the way and it would have drained all the water into the sea. Now we the humans have planned to build a multi-purpose project here, a dam here, a U-shaped dam has been built. We can very well make out. This dam is very sturdy because you have rocky structures on this side, you have rocky hills on the other side and this dam has been successful in collecting water that rushes out of the gorge here. Now this is dam. This is the reservoir built by the dam. Dam reservoir. The dam has been able to collect a huge quantum of water in this reservoir. Okay, we'll see other aspects now. Here we have the sluice gates you can make out. What is the sluice gate? Sluice gates are those provided in a dam for emptying the flood waters. When there is a flood or the water level goes beyond the danger level, automatically through the sluice gates water starts getting emptied from the dam. Sluice gates, there may be one, two or three. The engineers who maintain the dam decide and allow the water to pass out. Because of the water contained here in the reservoir, we have very little water in the river. As and when we require water, we can allow it to flow the downstream. We call it as downstream now. This river used to be full to its brim in the rainy season. But now it is not so as water gets collected in the reservoir itself.
So here you have the embankment side wherein people can trade, go, walk around, sit, enjoy because the water level has gone down in the river and we allow only that much of water which we require for various human activities we release only that much of water from the dam not otherwise another situation where water is allowed to run down the river is when floods are there when the flood levels they endanger the very existence of the dam then sluice gates are opened and water is allowed to flow out just to add to the beauty and everything we have provided for a tunnel here there's a road right on the top of the dam here you have the tunnel which moves through the hill and it gives the connectivity to the outside world here then here some tribals are there residing by the side of the dam dam's gorge gorge through which water enters in uh, they have been permitted to continue life there the tribal huts you see and quite a few villages have got submerged in water they all have been provided replacement here in a newly built village we have tried to show every aspect of a dam in minute details from study point of view it is not the model of any river dam it is only a model for study purpose Okay, here yeah, let's see what all benefits do we get from that, from the dam, providing water for irrigation. Here you see agricultural fields and this has been made possible all around the year, all the 12 months of the year because of the existence of the dam. In the rainy season, the fields may get enough water but when it comes to summer, this waterway river the natural drain that would have run out of water so agriculture would not have been possible now you can get water from the reservoir and you can continue with your agricultural activity ok number 2 generation of hydroelectric power you can see the hydro power station here at the base of the dam and water that is made to move through tunnels. The tunnels go through the dam, we don't see them. They come to the hydro power station, turbines start rotating there and potential energy of the water gets converted into kinetic energy here. The huge quantum of water that is collected here it has a huge amount of potential energy wasted with it. When it is allowed to move down, as it starts moving, you get potential energy getting converted into kinetic energy, turbines rotate, you have the uh, high tech machines operating and electricity gets produced and electricity high voltage electricity gets supplied to the various villages, maybe thousands of villages. Here the electrical lines are there that make the electricity move out of the hydro station. So this is hydro power. Hydro power is hydro power. Power which we draw from the, from water. Hydro power. It is a hydroelectric station. Electricity is generated by turning, making the turbines turn or rotate with the help of the water that gushes down through pipes. Then prevention of floods, you could have very well made out. Earlier in the rainy season, when it rains heavily in the catchment areas, automatically the level of water will suddenly go up and there will be floods here causing lot of damage, killing people. The, the life of the people will be in disarray. But all that cannot happen because there is a dam here. Most of the, much of the water that comes down is collected by the dam now. It doesn't allow it to flow. 
so water flow is regulated by the dam that's one of the main functions of a dam it regulates the flow of water it allows water to flow as and when we require so we have a hydel power station here then developing inland waterways now you can have ships and boats moving in the river here because water flows all the time no doubt they can even move here from one side to the other this is built on scale now otherwise from here to here it may 5 km 6 km so so people these tribes can move in boats and in most of the dams navigation is a key aspect which they keep in mind wherein people will find it easy to travel from one place to the other by waterways providing water for domestic purposes people here in the downstream villages would have had a very difficult time after winter gets over because the water gets drained out in the river there won't be water where do they have water for drinking where do they have water for cooking washing bathing and all their domestic uh, requirements so all these domestic purposes get attended to by the water that is collected in the dam then running industries you find an industry here for example we have shown an industry here that industry gets water from the reservoir it goes via pipes industry is made to run so in some of the cases and some of the multi purpose projects in the vicinity or the area around number of industries have come up number of industries because they were running shortage of water in that too but now that is made up by the dams um if you take into example rihang project or uh, uh, the damodar valley project damodar valley project is a huge industrial area that industrial area has been made to run lots of industries with the water that is drawn from the damodar river valley project the dams they are constructed there then then preventing soil erosion think of a situation wherein this dam was not there at all then there could have been lot of erosion hills would have lost their contour and that would have damaged the natural system here so soil erosion has got prevented by the dam in the meanwhile there can be even silt collection in the dam that's the disadvantage we have we have to overcome that but soil erosion is mainly prevented by the dam that is existent here okay enhancing forest wealth we can see forests all around here usually people think when they construct a dam forests they get completely devastated destroyed it doesn't happen because you will be able to water the seedlings reforestation a forestation activity you can take up you can see the flower forest here all around flourishes very well because the supply of water is continuous throughout the year so forest well will be able to protect is not that dams destroy the forest no doubt no, they destroy it to a certain extent but you can cover it up make it up once the dam is ready water can be drawn and we can use then developing fisheries here you see water is drawn from the dam and we have fisheries breeding of fish in the ponds so fisheries is a great flourishing activity wherever dams are there provided we have made the required arrangements then recreation part here lots of people keep coming to see the dam and that's a place we can arrange provide for their recreation aspects too people come stay they enjoy children play around uh, in the natural green background playing there or you can even arrange for navigation here a limited quantum of arrangement for children 
people to enjoy about. And here an ancient temple is there. The dam authorities have not uh, got it demolished. They have kept it up. It's running and the footsteps are there. The stairs are there to move about. They have, instead of just ignoring them, they have strengthened it. They have strengthened everything. And devotees and pilgrims too keep pouring in. Here, a forestation activity is going on. You can see. A forestation and in some places maybe reforestation. Where there was a forest earlier, it got destroyed because of the dam construction activities. Now you have to build up. The activity can go on. So, irrigation, agriculture, fisheries, recreation, then uh, um, a settlement of aborigines who had been staying here earlier and all these have become possible because of a planned multi-purpose project. A multi-purpose project won't have just agriculture in mind. It will keep in view all these various aspects of human life and um, run it. Okay, now coming to some of the major dams of India. One, Damodar Valley project. I select Damodar Valley project because it is one of the earliest projects India had taken up. In 1948 we started. It went up to 1966. Damodar Valley project is almost um, a development over the Tennessee Valley Project of United States of America. Tennessee Valley Project was spoken all over the world. The first of its kind. We got the Damodar Valley Project built up, restructured, almost on the lines of Tennessee Valley Project. You know, Damodar Valley This is, uh, I show you now, Damodar River, you find in Jharkhand, Bihar and uh, West Bengal, Damodar River here. Jharkhand, Bihar, West Bengal. This Jharkhand River had been a sorrow of Bengal. It's nicknamed like that, sorrow of Bengal. Almost every year there will be floods. Once in three to four years, there will be a heavy flood. Heavy flood. And it will take you with the lives of more than a lakh or two lakh people. Suddenly the level of water goes up because of heavy rain, flooding, and villages get destroyed, completely washed out. So Damodar River, people used to call it as the sorrow of Bengal. More than doing good to people, Damodar Valley used to, Damodar Valley floods, river floods used to devastate the life of the Bengalis. So this, the planners used to keep in mind, work out, even foreign experts used to come and see what can be done. Very fertile area, you can't give up, but in the meanwhile, life is miserable there. So they decide we will have a valley project on the lines of Tennessee Valley. So mainly four dams have been constructed. It's the first river valley project in India. Bakranangal Dam was the first dam built up. This is river valley project. It is four or more than four dams. They are built in one place and lot of other multi-purpose viewpoints you will have in mind. Here four dams. Tilaya Dam, Konar Dam, Maithon Dam and uh, Panchet Dam. Four dams have been built in a wide area. They all complement each other and these dams prevent floods. Sudden floods are not there in the Damodar Valley now because the reservoirs are so big. They hold water and then they allow water to move uh, as per the requirements. So today, people have been able to reside there with uh, quite an amount of peace, peace of mind. 
कि ये फ्लड कंट्रोल इरिगेशन नेविगेशन हाइडल पावर एफॉरेस्टेशन फिशरीज इंडस्ट्रीज ऑल दीज आर द वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स विच आर केप्ट इन माइंड वाइल बिल्डिंग दिस रिवर वैली प्रोजेक्ट नोन एज द सौरव पेंगार ऑन द लाइन्स ऑफ टेनिसी वैली अथॉरिटी यूएसए the dam has been built the valley has been, project has been taken up next comes bakra nangal project highest dam in india highest gravity dam there are different kinds of dams gravity dam buttress dam mud dam gravel dam these are all different kinds of dams what is gravity dam gravity dam is one which is built straight up very thick wall you will get astonished to know that the thickness of the wall of bakranangal project bakranangal project is a sum up of two projects one is bakra project the other is nanga two different dams when we speak when we say we put them together and say bakranangal project and bakra dam width of the dam at the bottom it is 300 meters nearly 300 meters width wall width otherwise it cannot withstand the gush of water that comes from the himalayas down in the satluj river these two dams have been built across river satluj a tributary of river indus bakranangal dam two dams bakra highest gravity dam in india a very interesting dam this dam was inaugurated by pandit jawarlal nehru on that occasion he said temples dams are temples of modern india even today when never we speak of dams we remember the sentence spoken out by pandit nehru they are the true dams of modern india today we have been able to produce lot of food enough for 135 crore of people of india because we have dams and we have the irrigation facility much of the land of india has come under irrigation again satluj satluj is in himachal pradesh flood control utility flood control irrigation hydel power afforestation soil erosion height of bakra is 226 meters 226 meters height the weight of the dam itself is so heavy that the dam stands dam stands on its own weight on its own gravity that's why we call it as gravity dam and the reservoir of the dam is named after the first law minister of india in nehru's cabinet govind vallabh pant govind vallabh pant sagar the reservoir is called as Okay, we come to Hirakud project. It's a uh, congregation of three dams. Congregation of three dams. It is built across Mahanadi, Odisha. See, the utilities are hydel power, flood control, irrigation, transport, fisheries, afforestation. This is the longest dam in India. Each dam is something attributed to it. It's the longest dam. nearly 3 kilometers the length of the dam it is around 3 kilometers and if you put into account all the mini dams the barrages everything it goes beyond 15 kilometers so it is known as the longest dam then come to tungabhadra project a project in karnataka joint venture of karnataka and ap andhra pradesh karnataka have almost an equal time over this dam tungabhadra dam it's a near hospital this dam is near hospital as you go to hampi you can visit tungabhadra dam too a beautiful dam with the recreation facilities all around hydel power flood control irrigation fisheries are the main stays uh, hospital bellary district and the reservoir is named after the presiding deity of hampi pampa pampa sagar is been named a pampa the presiding deity of vijayanagar kings vijayanagar kings 
we come to the fourth one upper krishna project upper krishna project is given life to the people of northern karnataka not karnataka two dams are there associated with the project is across krishna river a mighty river almutti dam in basavan bagewadi and narayanapura dam in mudde bihar these two dams built with a huge expenditure even today the upper krishna project is not complete in stages they are completing but the dam is functioning both these dams are functioning they are serving people now the second level third level still we are building upon that in stages we are building hydro power flood control irrigation drinking water uh, bagalkot bagalkot gets drinking water from the almati benefits of benefits bagalkot five districts it benefits five districts of north karnataka bagalkot vijayapur kalburgi yadgir belgavi it supports life in five districts see what a great standing of these dams north karnataka yeah north karnataka has got benefit in kosi project kosi project is called as the sorrow of bihar kosi comes in many streams from nepal kosi is a major river of nepal it flows down the himalayan mountains as it flows down it causes great damage in bihar in the rainy season great damage and the river keeps changing its course because the contour is such some of the rivers disappear it will be flowing elsewhere over a span of nearly 300 to 400 kilometers width it keeps on changing its flow that makes the river much more miserable for the people of bihar okay kosi india and nepal share as tungabhadra dam is shared by karnataka and andhra here kosi is shared by india and nepal we have an understanding perfect understanding mainly it is to control floods kosi controls floods in spite of kosi projects once in 10 years or so you have great floods that even the dam is not in a position to prevent hydro power flood control irrigation fisheries sorrow of bihar this is called as an international project lot of international agencies took lot of interest in the kosi projects whenever these projects are taken up it's not only the indian technicians who work on it from all over the world the best are called they are asked to judge analyze synthesize synthesize the entire project into a working project now comes rihan valley project it has a huge reservoir again named after the first law minister of india in nehru's cabinet Govinda Vallabhpant Reservoir Riyan Project Uttar Pradesh one of the large reservoirs in India Riyan the river is Riyan Riyan is a tributary of Son Son in turn is a tributary of Ganges Son takes birth in India mountains and moves towards north and then joins Ganges and moves towards the Bay of Bengal Son river Son uh, Riyan high idle power flood control irrigation fisheries soil erosion it prevents riyan is a tributary of so nagarjuna sagar project gobinda vallabhpant reservoir once again most of the reservoirs were named after him he was a great minister central minister india law minister a learned person uh, krishna krishna river it's built across krishna In, in Telangana, it's in Telangana now. Hydro power, flood control, irrigation. Nagarjuna Konda, the reservoir is called as Konda means Kerala or Pond Reservoir. Nagarjuna Konda. I have named about eight here, but don't think there are only eight dams in India. We have around hundred fifty huge dams in India today. Hundred fifty big dams, about five hundred. smaller ones bunds barrages in our five year plans we did lay lot of stress on building dams and utilizing 
the water flows that flows down the rivers and gets wasted when it gets drained into the sea so there is lot of meaning in what Jawaharlal Nehru said I close it, close my elocution with the same words dance are the modern temples of India thank you